used to really take um, events personally because I've got such ridiculously high standards that when things don't go to play, ultimately I have to accept responsibility for everything. Like I can't, you know, even if one of the team fucks up, I can't say, you know, it's your fault. I have to accept responsibility because everyone's working under my standard. So, um, yeah, I used to take everything really personally, whereas now you know, I've become a lot more, I wouldn't say I've become more forgiving, but I've certainly let go a lot. I've surrendered a lot. I just used to be a lot harsher. Like I used to really give people both barrels and not yelling or screaming, but just, you know, I'm not sure if you've seen that yet, but I can be, maybe you have, I can be pretty intense. As my wife says, I don't have to say anything, I, but when I get in a bad mood, I just radiate an energy that is just palpable. <laughs> that was mild. <laughs> that was very mild. Money, you got two seconds? Yep. Water kill talk? Yeah. So what's <laughs> like the... It literally is. Yeah, it literally is, actually. Water kill talk. So what's, before, before, I, before we have a huddle, because I came down early, because obviously I want to make sure... What? James over there. Okay, let's go somewhere a bit more private. So things are being compromised. Well, not compromised. Things are being adjusted to accommodate the fact that not everyone's here. Yep. And we've got a short team. It's a tight team. Yeah. So Jane's like, oh, I just don't have the time to do the name badges how we would normally do them. So I'm just going to do them like this. It's not sloppy, but it's always changing things to yep. accommodate, you know, if we're late. So. Anyway. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Mm -hmm. Go to the water cooler. <laughs> well, obviously, I want to try and approach this differently um, than what I'd normally do. Um, well, new, 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 new. Exactly. New. Like, I don't want but to be... Time correct. doesn't change. Yeah. Responsibility, just because we're new. Just, okay, so standard, commitment, communication. Yeah, and, and ownership of it. Yeah, standard, commitment, communication, ownership. All right, let's huddle on that. I want to start with an apology. I owe you guys a big apology. I'm clearly not holding the standard high enough. I'm clearly not communicating at the level that uh, is required. Um, and I'm obviously not taking enough responsibility uh, across the board because it appears that the standards are slipping. It appears that the communication isn't clear enough. Uh, and it would appear that, um, yeah, I'm just not doing my job and I want to apologise. I mean that, hand on heart. I'm obviously not doing something right. So in order to rectify that, that means I'm going to raise the standards. I'm going to raise the standards of my communication today with you guys. Uh, I'm going to raise the standards of ownership and accept complete responsibility for everything that's happened today. Everything that happened yesterday, everything that's happened today, this entire room, this is my fault. I bought this room. But what I need from you guys is to help me. I need you guys to get behind me and actually support me in raising the standards. It is apparently clear that I'm not communicating at a big enough standard for you guys because there are still breakdowns in communication. Yesterday it was clear we had communication challenges and uh, it's still going on. Like we're still not communicating on a half level. I am of the extreme awareness that this is a very new team. With the new team comes from me a high level of flexibility. And for people who've worked with me in the past, you'd know this, what you're seeing right now is not common. Normally I'd be fucking blasting. Uh, and it's just not how, I, it's not the leader I want to be anymore. I want to be a different leader. I want to be a leader that is more understanding, more flexible, more compassionate, uh, more empathetic. So I, I apologise that I didn't have this conversation with you earlier and I apologise that, you know, I didn't take uh, um, greater foresight. I'm sorry, was it the gas or...? <laughs> What's going on? Because um, yesterday you called me out saying I was asking a lot of questions but there were not because... I was calling you out because I was getting feedback that the team was getting resistance from you. And, you know, in an environment like this we, we can't deal with resistance. We have to deal with flow. Does this make sense? And understanding... Jabo! But I, I also get the potential responsibility associated with doing something and then yeah. not doing it right and then thinking, yeah, well, yeah. fuck, I was told not to ask you know, questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, so it's finding that balance. Finding that balance. Yeah. So I get that. Yeah. I get that. I guess because I, I really care. I know you yeah. care. That's why you're so emotional. <laughs> that's evident. Yeah. That's really evident. Um, yeah, and that's why you're here. You're here because you care. And we care about this event. We care about these people. I care about you guys as a team. I care about being the absolute best leader for you guys possible and setting the best example. And that's why I'm sorry. I apologize that I didn't forward think this scenario, you know, a, a, a little bit better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I only realized what had happened yesterday morning when I checked my currency account. I'd made like uh, about 30 grand overnight in my US currency and I was like, oh, 
what's happened? And I went straight to the news and I was like, Brexit. And I was like, oh no. Oh yes, oh no. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I was on the right side of the trade. I wasn't trading, I was just holding currency. All right, leaders, how we doing? Guys, just something I was thinking about this morning. I was uh, flicking through my book, Extreme Ownership, uh, last night, and I was actually reading a segment on the importance of leading up and down the chain of command. And not that it has any direct relevance right now, but it just really highlighted the importance of communication in business and the importance of communicating both up the chain of command to the people who are above you, but also down the chain of command. And one of the things that I've observed, especially with myself, is who here sometimes feels like they really don't have the time or the energy to communicate more openly with their team? Yeah. And do you know what I've found when I do that? Do you know what happens? They model me. And when people don't communicate, things break down. You know, communication is really critical when it comes to growth. Because let's be honest, sometimes communication takes what? Time. It takes energy, it takes effort, and sometimes we, be, we think, well, I should be putting that energy and effort into other income-producing activities. But what we don't realize is sometimes when, when that communication breaks down, that actually creates challenges that prevent growth. In some cases, it creates challenges that cost money. And one of the reflections that I've had, especially recently, is I've got to become a better communicator. I have to, it's just the game. Just because you're a part of K2 now doesn't give you the right to stay here for the next four years. And I don't say that to scare you. I say that because that's how communities work, by protecting and ensuring that the culture is fostered in the direction and the way that you want it to go. Does this make sense? So today is really the opportunity where we really get to acknowledge and recognise and welcome people that have graduated into year two and have been invited back. And the couple that I want to bring up next is um, Chris and Karen. They've been in my life for a very long time. We never really got to know each other that, that well. And I feel really honoured because not only have I been able to bring them into K2 Elite and help them with their business and help them with their direction, but I've also got to know my family. Uh, and for me, ah, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> and I haven't been very close with my family most of my life. I've always sought family ah, through my friends. My friends are my family. And to actually have family that I'm really proud of to have as family, it just means a lot to me. And so I'm not gonna say much more because, <laughs> <laughs> can we please welcome Karen and Chris Corby to the stage as senior leaders. I'm oh, sorry. I love you so much. The next senior leader that I want to welcome to the stage is a man that obviously has been in the group for a while now, but he's also really passionate about helping people with disabilities. And, oh man, for fuck's sake, can someone like, I'll pull a nose here, that'll help. <laughs> but if there's one thing that this world needs, it doesn't need more business people who want to make more money. You know, there's, there's already plenty of those. What this world needs is business people who are really committed to developing a higher level of consciousness and a higher level of themselves. And also with a commitment to help other people that perhaps aren't thought about as much as what other people are. I am so honored, Ian, to welcome you to senior leadership. It's not an, only an honor and a privilege, but uh, it's something that means a, a hell of a lot to me and also the rest of the family as well. So ladies and gentlemen, can we please welcome Mr. Ian Adair. Look, I'm not gonna apologize for the emotion, but I think it, it just demonstrates how important that our community is and how valuable leadership is to us. You know, I don't see you guys as my clients, I see you guys as an extension of my team, uh, but I also see you in many ways as an extension of my family. And we've had so many people that have come forward to us and go, this is the family that I've always wanted. And you can kind of understand that when you see the emotion that is invoked. <laughs> Even the Harmeen is like, can we get Harmeen some tissues? <laughs> Well, the thing we, that you're going to learn is social media has the power to get your business in front of thousands of people every single month. And what determines how many people you get in front of is really governed by one thing. Do you want to know what that one thing is? It's all content. We are moving into an age where consumption of information is going to be predicated by the quality of content that you are publishing across social media. The only insurance policy you can build in the next three to five years for your business will be your social presence. Now, you, you've got one or two ways you can approach this. You can approach this with a story of, oh my God, and you can whinge and bitch and moan, and you can look at all the reasons why it won't work, or you can ask this question, how the f do I adapt? Because this is about an adaptation, and you have to adapt. Do you know what's really exciting? Is gonna be this conversation three months from now, 
And then this conversation, six months from now, but here's my commitment to you. For those of you in K2 Elite, in the next six to 12 months, you will be the most advanced businesses in the country when it comes to understanding how to use social media. Because I, my promise to you is, my promise to you is I am gonna fucking master social media. Everything is changing. And right now, most people don't wanna admit that it's changing, and it is. It's already changed, and I'm fucking late to the party. If I can learn this in four months, and do this in four months, Imagine what we can do together in the next six to 12 months. Imagine what we can do in the next three years. <laughs> that's it, that's epic. Say the social media stuff still. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. It, look, it's been over my head for a long time. It's only really been in the last few months I've really started to understand it. So, you know. I haven't even tapped into that. Wore it the same to me. It's like, what's a tweet? Oh, no, what's a hashtag? <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you, but I don't quite understand uh, I only learned what a hashtag was, yeah, probably November last year. So, yeah. so yeah. there's hope. Because yeah. we're not there yet. Not so, that's a, look, and the beautiful thing is, because is it, it's a long game, you know, even if you didn't start deploying for three to six months, that's fine. Yeah, yeah I, I just can't believe really, like, the, the impact you've had on me business wise in five weeks. Oh, wow, well, thank you. Mind, and personally. Oh. I'm more excited about what can we do now. Like, if we can do that in five weeks. Mate, we've, got a, we've got a great history together. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bless you, nice guys. You. Yeah, see you, dude. Lovely people, eh? Hey? Can I play you guys a short video that we've actually created in the last two days? Yes. Yeah? All right, can we kill the lights? Would you like to know what the video is about? No. No, I think it'd be really important if I told you. You'll leave us hanging again. I will. Greetings. My name is Jocko Willink, and I've been invited to come down to New Zealand by Kerwin Ray and have an opportunity to speak to members of the K2 elite. <laughs> How much you love me? Yeah. <laughs> Are you curious? Yeah. <laughs> ah! That's what I want to hear. <laughs> All right, we'll see you downstairs at 6.20. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. And Snapchat's working? Yeah. <laughs> and I had goosebumps when that was going on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thanks so much for um, joining. Hey, no worries. It's sort of like learning how to have a family. Yeah, that's exactly the way I see it. Yeah, learning how to have a family. You have no idea what that means to me. <laughs> because Matthias is a filmmaker and I've advertised in a few places and um, yeah, he found it on Twitter. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's becoming my, uh, my shadow. You know, with Matthias, he can hear any, like he hears everything. There's yeah. nothing that he doesn't hear and I have zero issue around trust. Yeah. Mate, we'd love to have you back. Oh, that's awesome. We'd love to have you back. No, you, you, uh, you've been through the trenches. Um, it's been and, amazing. Mate, you've, you're, you're amazing, let's be honest. Thank you much, but I, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. I've been keeping the nose right above the water line. Sometimes, Sometimes that's all you need to do. <laughs> and just kick like hell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited. You know what, you know how you told me to make some videos? Yeah. That video that you liked yesterday of me sitting at Bondi. Yeah. You've got two leads for that. So. Dude, boom. It's so funny, I never told anyone this because it sounds incredibly like presumptuous, but when I saw Kerwin, something just kind of went like, yes. And I was like, I'm either going to work with you or something. Like, it's just going to, something's going to happen. And I was, started following Kerwin on Snapchat and he was like, oh, we're going through a really big growth phase and we're putting on new stuff and all that. And something inside of him was like, if I miss this opportunity because I didn't push hard enough, I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. And then this is what I said, what I find so fascinating is the amount of people that have like come and gone, but how constant the culture has been. Like just by those few key pillars, Kerwin, Marie, Sean, their ability to maintain that expectation is like, it's unreal. Like you come in, it's very clear. You come in and it's like, all right, that's how it is. This is what we do. You're either with it or you're not. But it's a funny thing, like the more challenges we have, the harder we work. 
you know, and I think that's, um, that's always the thing that we do whenever, the, whenever everything's against us, it's when we step up.